happy Facebook Live time. Hi everyone, stamping friends, crafty people. Um, my name is Melissa Kerman and my business name is called Melissa's Crafting Treehouse. You see a little bit of my treehouse behind you. <laughs> um, welcome if you're watching live on Facebook or YouTube later for the replay or on Facebook later for the replay. <laughs> Hi Pam, welcome, good to have you here. Um, so for today I am featuring um, four projects uh, that are sneak peeks from the Simple Sweet Stampers tutorial bundle um, featuring the um, perfectly plaid uh, product suite. Hi Sally, hi Betty, welcome. So glad to see people joining in. Um, and I got a few announcements today, um, not too much, uh, so I'm going to just launch right in. Again, welcome, thanks for being here. Uh, so you guys probably may, you may know that uh, it is now the year-end closeout sale time at Stampin' Up! So uh, Stampin' Up! has released the, um, all the items that are retiring from the holiday catalog. And um, I always like to highlight in my catalog the items that are retiring so I get, you know, so I can just have a visual of it. Um, the, uh, some things are carrying over. In fact, this, this stamp set, the perfectly plaid stamp set and punch. So just a quick peek, peek at those. This is what we're featuring today. Um, I know it's backwards, but you get the idea. Um, so those are carrying over, which is awesome. The designer paper, which we're also using, is not carrying over. So that um, that's going away. I have used, can you see? There's hardly anything left. I've used this whole pack, so exciting. <laughs> so fun when I use things up, or mostly. So um, all three projects use that beautiful designer paper. Uh, so you'll get to see it on a couple of in a couple of different ways, um, and let's see. So the it's a long list, the items that are retiring. Uh, this tiny little hint writing here, which I can't stand, it's so small. But I actually read that list today and highlighted everything in my catalog, <laughs> and you can see that um, in my online store as well. Just click on the carryover items, and I'm sorry, the uh, clear out clearance sale items. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll see all of those in there. Now, okay, I'm getting my words confused here, I'm just realizing. So there is also a carryover list, a carryover item list, okay, right here. Now, um, this is where it gets a tiny bit confusing. I don't know if you guys are following this, but Stampin' Up's doing something a little bit different this year. Some items are uh, carrying over and will be available uh, as of you know January 3rd, the day that the um, holiday catalog goes away, so it'll carry over and will be available. That includes the wrapped in plaid, I mean the perfectly plaid stamp set and punch and other things. And there are other things that are going to be going away that are retiring temporarily <laughs> and they're going to bring them back into the holiday catalog in 2020. So one of the items that falls, falls into that category is the brightly gleaming um, designer series paper, which has been super popular, so they're going to bring that back. Um, and also the, uh, I think it's called Feels Like Frost. It was that photorealistic paper that's just gorgeous. So um, that's kind of exciting and, and, and fun all at the same time. A little bit confusing with the different lists, but um, uh, there are, uh, if you receive my newsletter, there's a link, uh, there were links in the newsletter uh, that went out on Wednesday with all of those details and lists. So um, check that out if you're interested. Um, so let's see what else. Um, the other big thing that's happening right now for me is I have now made available my Taste of a Sweet product shares. This is the menu. It's a detailed menu. Um, I'm featuring the seven product suites that are coming up in the January to June um, mini catalog that starts on June 3rd. Uh, so there are seven suites and in each product share there's uh, a medley of all the consumables or the consumables that are practical to put um, into a product share. Uh, and I. I personally love my Taste of Sweet Shares. Does anybody out there love them? <laughs> because it lets you get a little bit of a lot of different things and you don't have to buy whole packs of anything. So I'm gonna show you the product shares that I've assembled. I have six out of the seven assembled. There was only one that I wasn't able to pre-order. That was the birthday bonanza. And that one is coming. I'm gonna get that next Wednesday along with my holiday, I'm, so, I'm sorry, along with my January to June um, uh, occasion mini catalog so I'm super excited that those are coming next Wednesday and I'll be mailing those out to uh, regular customers um, uh, shortly thereafter okay so let me show you my product shares because I think they look just so pretty so this is the um, 
uh, Parisian Blossoms share. So you're getting a quarter of the designer paper in a pack and then two yards of the ribbon and then the, these gorgeous embellishments. I don't know, can you see them? I think they're so pretty. And then on the back I have a, um, is that upside down? Yes, yeah, so you probably can't read it, it's backwards, but just a, a basically an inventory of what's in the share. Um, the next one is, and this is just a really nice way to sort of showcase the, the products as well. This one is the um, Peaceful Poppies um, share that has actually four items in it. So there's sequins in there, it's a half a pack, and then ribbon, and then these lovely elements that are self-adhesive die cuts, and then designer paper. This is gonna be super popular. This is just gorgeous, a gorgeous, gorgeous suite. The next one is called Tropical Oasis. Look how colorful that is. Now this is um, the uh, Memories and More card pack and it's a half of a pack. So um, it's a really nice variety of cards that can help you put together quick cards um, or put it, do it in your memory keeping, etc. And then there's little embellishments in there, which I know you can't see, but they're beautiful tropical themed metallic elements. This one is the uh, Country Club Suite, um, which just comes with two things, this uh, colored twine and then this designer paper. I'm partial to the back sides of this paper because it's all sort of golf oriented. I'm not a real golf girl. So the back sides are mostly argyle. So they're really, really pretty patterns on the back, um, at least more of my taste. <laughs> and then um, got two more. This is of course the Valentine's Suite. Um, it's called From My Heart. Notice I'm looking at the back because I don't really have them all memorized now. But this paper is specialty designer paper. Actually, several of these are specialty, but there's shiny elements in there with the red, um, sort of red metallic, and then the little doilies ribbon. Um, these, um, what are they called? They're called um, faceted gems. They're just different shades of pinks and reds that are gems, and then these little cups here. Um, and then last but not least, this is the Best Dressed Suite. So there's middle little mini six by three by three cards, ribbon, and then let's see, these cute little tassels right there. Now, this is very sort of oriented towards people who wear makeup and wear high heels and stuff like that, which is totally not me. <laughs> but this designer paper is gorgeous when I was pulling it out and um, creating the product share. So I had to look at all the patterns to so check out how beautiful the, the image is. So um, there's lots of versatility in that designer paper because it's not all about, you know, high heels and purses and stuff. Now, no offense against those who like that stuff. <laughs> this is not my style. But the paper is gorgeous and I'm totally excited to play with it for the more neutral patterns. So, um, <clears throat> so super fun. Okay, so uh, moving right along, let's see. Um, now is also the demonstrator pre-order period. For those of you who are demonstrators, I'm sure you know that. Um, but it's also a time when if you're considering buying the starter kit, it's, it's a great time to buy it because you can include pre-order items in your starter kit. So you, the starter kit is completely customizable. It's $99 and you get 125 in product plus business supplies. So um, just know that that is uh, a very fun option if you want to be a discount purchaser or you want to build a business, whatever you want and anything in between. All right, so are you guys ready for the projects? I'm sure you are, you're probably more than ready. Um, so this first project, again, I'm featuring some projects made by my design team members. Um, and I'm just gonna go ahead and turn the camera down and get started with that. Okay. So these are all pretty simple. I've done pieces and parts of them just to make it quick. Um, and be able to get through all four without being here all night long. So for this first project, I'm using the Stitch Nested Labels dies, and I'm using this particular size, so you'll recognize that when I get to that point. The, of course, the perfectly plaid set, the tin tile embossing folder, which I just adore, um, sequins, and of course the coordinating punch that goes with the perfectly plaid set. And then I'm using this ribbon. I forget what it's called, but it's in the, um, that, what was it called? Christmas, there was a Santa suite. <laughs> anyway, it's retiring, this ribbon is. So just so you know, but we're using that on this project as well. Okay, I'll get my little pieces and parts out here. Okay. So for this one, and I'm just gonna show you this super fast. I have taken a card body, five and a half by eight and a half. 
I've dry embossed the bottom with my tin tile embossing folder. And as my little post-it note says here, dry emboss, dry emboss only one and three quarters of the front. And that's so that when you open the card, your ribbon will be able to straddle the, the inside and it will still look pretty on the inside. Um, <laughs> okay, yes, it is definitely one of my favorite stamp sets too, this perfectly plaid. So I'm glad it's sticking around. So I have taken some adhesive and put it on the back side of my ribbon, attached it to the inside, and then I've placed this strategically because this um, gap right here is going to get covered up. So grab my adhesive and I'm actually just going to run it right along this ribbon. Now this ribbon is double-sided. <laughs> of course it's double-sided. You're like, what? Um, what I mean by that is that one side shows more of what is actually the neutral and the cherry cobbler and the other side shows more of the cherry cobbler so it's just a little bit different on the stripe from one side to the other so i'm just going to place down my And then I have taken two punched pieces from the Perfectly Plaid designer paper. You guys see that? The lighting's not so great. So I love this blue. Blue one has the little gold elements in it and then the red stripe. And I've put dimensionals on here. I've done a bunch of this ahead of time just to save time. So I actually have oops, the, um, this blue piece, I'm sorry, the red piece up on double, a double layer of dimensionals. And then I've got a dimensional between this piece and this piece, so in between the two layers, hard to see maybe. And then this is single layered. And that's so that I have some different um, heights for my trees. Uh, I, I definitely like to vary my height. So this is how this is going to come together. Something like that. And, <clears throat> and then I'm just tying my... My, my air bow here. I'm just going to attach those pieces there and now I have to decide whether I'm going to use the red or the green. And then I would tie my bow and guess what? <laughs> By the magic of TV, voila! <laughs> it's done. Okay, and I put a couple of little red sequins here and here and you can see I tied my bow itty bitty tiny so that it could kind of stick off there in the corner. Now, um, uh, so anyway, this is it. Now the... Um, the other version, I was going to use this designer paper, so I will probably finish that up and put a photograph of that on my website, um, on my blog post tomorrow, so you guys can see the finished project. Um, but I'm going to call that one done. So I want to get to the next one, which is a 3D item, and it's the cutest little 3D item. Okay, grab my thing. So I got my score scoreboard now this one was designed by uh design team member uh chris cowan cohen at uh, cowan i think it is um i'm using a piece of designer paper that let's see i can measure it three yeah three by six right so it's just half of a six by six piece and this is actually one of the um patterns from that suite that i'm forgetting the name of it the one with the santa in it um it's also retiring so uh Oh, well, goodbye. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to score this one. Um, can you tell I'm in kind of a funny mood tonight? I, I am. <laughs> anyway, um, moving right along. So I'm going to use my uh, stylus here, and I'm going to score this at two and three quarters and three and a quarter. And with my, I'm using the fat end of my stylus because with designer paper it can be very, um, uh, delicate, if you will. You can sort of tear through the paper, and I have. So now I'm doing um, a half an inch on the left side and on the right side. And then I'm just going to take my little paper snips and cut out a little wedge. This just helps it to come together better and make sure you can get square corners. And then I'm going to do it on the other side 
but because speeding through again magic of TV woohoo and now I get to show you the perfectly plaid version that I've done so I've um, notched out those two sides and then I'm going to fold over this part and I'm going to put it into this punch somebody know the name of this punch it's new to the catalog as of uh, June of this past year but for some reason, the name of it never sticks in my mind. I know it's not the scallop tag topper tapper. Ah, jeez. <laughs> it's not the scallop tag topper punch, but it's similar. Um, it's got a lot more like shape to it, uh, a little bit more complicated. So anyway, this piece right here measures two inches wide. And I can, um, it's a little bit too wide to stick in the well. Actually, maybe it's a little bit close. But if it were... Um, a little bit too wide you can sort of bypass by sticking it in it'd be helpful if it was open uh, at an angle and then you just want to make sure that it's centered on the inside and pushed up against the end and then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side so this turns out to be such a cute little project in the end I'm going to show you, of course. Make sure it's centered. Okay, and now I have those weird little doohickeys sticking out. So I got to get rid of those. So you know what I'm talking about, right? Those ones. So I'm just going to snip those off straight across on all four sides. And incidentally, with this one, because I did it ahead of time, I did burnish the folds uh, quite a bit, so it would be nice and um, well creased, if you will. So now I'm just going to go ahead and put this together. Um, and since my adhesive is messed up, I'm going to, let's see, how can I skip forward here? Um, I'll just use a different adhesive. Let's see, i got to find one. Here we go. I must have lots of adhesive sitting around this space, right? Now this typically is not going to be strong enough because it's uh, this is a 3D thing. So guess what? I'm going to sneak my some of my tear and tape here and just put it on two of the flaps. Now one of the things I like about this project is that I had to make something or figure out something to go in the inside. So I, I think in my thing I told you guys I, I have four projects and it, the fourth one is because I had to make a fourth thing <laughs> to put in the inside of my little, my cute little pocket here. Okay, so I'm just gonna line up my edges. So this is one of these kind of projects where you could, you know, put a little treat in it and put it in a stocking or, you know, just just something little and fun. It's actually probably fit a Ghirardelli chocolate or two perfectly as well. I tried to put some mini, like, snack size candies in it, but a little bit fat and tall for that matter. Okay, so there's my cute little pouch. Now, here's for the fun. This is even more fun. So I'm gonna stick this in here, and actually the way Chris had it designed was, it's just tied at the top with a bow, and it was really cute. And then, now I don't know about you guys, but in the Perfectly Plaid set, there are these two images, and I've played with this set quite a bit. Um, but it uh, dawned on me when I was making this project that these might actually layer one on top of each other. I don't know why it took me so long to figure that out. Seems so silly. But they look really pretty layered on top of one another. So I did this with shaded spruce. So full ink for the outline layer and second ink for the stamped over layer for the second image. And it turned out so cute. And then, of course, put some dimensionals on the back side. And that's going to go on the front of my little pocket. And then, gotta do the last step. This is the fun 
Well, actually, I have to finish the other part to really have it be done. So I'm going to set this aside for a second because I've got another little, the other little project that I created. I've got to show you that. Okay. So I'm going to show you the other project, and then it will go backwards there. So here's my finished project, right? Now, normally you'd think, okay, untie the bow. <laughs> but guess what? You're not going to untie the bow. You're going to have to be there with your friend when you give it to them because all you do is pull it up. And I got a little treat inside, so it pulled up the treat. It's actually a Post-it note holder. I've been dying to use this uh, little uh, stocking paper forever, so I finally found an application for it. And it's just the cutest little thing. Is that cute or what? So I have a, a little magnet. This is just magnets that I bought at Michael's in a roll. And uh, it holds it shut perfectly. But it makes for just a really nice little surprise. So you want to know how that's put together, I imagine. Right? So super easy. Basically, all I did was I wove that ribbon through. And then I'm just going to put that in there. And I've done this with a candy bar. Maybe I've showed it. I'm not sure. And then I just push it down in and then tie my bow and I'm all set to go. So anyway, I thought that was pretty cute and clever and just the perfect size little gift for the inside of my little treat there. Now for the post-it note holder, these are my dimensions. Super quick and easy, right? So it's just two by four and seven eighths, and then there's my scoring. One and a half, one and seven eighths, three and three eighths, and three and three quarters. And then of course my designer paper panel across the, um, the front was a little bit narrower. So anyway, I'll put the, a picture of this on my website if anybody wants to make that. Pretty easy to recreate yourself, but uh, nice if you don't have to figure it out, if it's figured out already. Alrighty, so that's three projects. Now I got my last one which is actually my contribution to the um, Simple Sweet Stampers tutorial bundle for December. And for mine, I kind of went a little different route. Now I'm using the, the dog punch, <laughs> but um, it's, it's only really for the heart. So this is not really a dog themed project. I have to go and do something just a second. Okay, so let's, see, let's turn my camera a little bit, a little bit off. Okay, so we're using the dog punch for the heart. And I brought in, in addition to the perfectly plaid designer paper, I'm using the Merry Christmas to All and the Merry Christmas Thinlets. These have been around, I think, since the last catalogs. So they've been around for a while, but um, have really barely used them. And I just love these die cuts. They're so pretty. So I had used the perfectly plaid stamp set a lot, so I wanted to kind of do something a little bit different. So I'm actually going to show you my finished projects first, and then I'll show you how I put it together, um, just because why not. So this is my first one. It's really very straightforward to put together with one little detail that needs explanation, but essentially I die cut from the designer paper and use the negative space, a piece of gold foil in behind, and then of course I heat embossed this and use that little itty bee heart from the Dog Builder Punch. Um, and then I have the shaded spruce piece up on dimensionals. And then the second one that I did was this one. I thought I would like this one better because I love this blue paper, but I think in the end I like the green one. It's a little bit more bold. But um, did the same thing, did Merry Christmas instead of Happy Christmas because the Merry was kind of longer and fit along the front a little bit better. But again, put dimensionals in be behind the Knight of Navy cardstock. Now, I don't know if you can tell by looking at these, but the Happy and the Merry are, they have sort of a, uh, what is it, an outline, if you will, sort of. So that's what I want to explain to you that I did. Now, I felt like it was necessary on this one because the Happy was just kind of, the letters weren't so distinctive before I did this little element that I'm going to explain. Um, this one, it kind of maybe filled it in a little bit more than I wanted. So I'm just going to show you what the heck I'm talking about because <laughs> I think maybe you don't even know. So um, anyway, here's my all my little die cut pieces from that designer paper. So these are so delicate and pretty and will have to be used on something at some point. Don't you agree? I just love them. Okay, so for my card. Now this is the same design 
as the blue one. And this is how I was intending to put together. So dimensional on the back side, that's heat embossed, that's right there. And now these are the three pieces that I used um, to put together this front piece. So I did the same thing here, but instead I had a piece of shaded spruce. And here's what I did. I took the negative space from um, cutting out the Mary, and then I just offset it ever so slightly um, on the inside so that, I'll just show you the comparison, it would close the letter in and make it a little bit more defined. So here is the with the edge, or I'll show you this one, the one with the edge, and then if I take away the blue, and honestly I think this one might even be better without the blue edge. What do you guys think? So this was sort of more subtle, right, to have that blue outline edge, and but that one's more bold. It was harder to get the, um, the offset on this one just because of the shapes of the letters. But uh, I think I'm going to just put this one together. Well, actually, I won't because my adhesive is messed up. But you guys get the idea. So it's just going to come together like that. And the Mary is quite a bit more bold than this one. Do you guys have a preference? Uh, the one that has the outline layer or the one without? I kind of like the one without. Um, so anyway, those are my projects. Those are the projects for today. Pretty simple, but um, uh, I think fun. And I personally, I, I love this, these dies. Um, and that I finally got to use them. Yay. <laughs> so fun. So that pretty much concludes what I wanted to share with you today. Um, just going to quickly turn the camera around and say hello again and just remind you to go check out the, um, the uh, let's see, the closeout items on um, my website. Just go to Stampin' Up, uh, my Stampin' Up website and click on the closeout items. You'll see what's uh, going away. There are things on discount up to 40% off, so something to be aware of. Um, and let's see what else. Um, if you're interested in my product shares, I'll include a link in the Facebook description and in the YouTube description. Um, but you can also go to my website, um, melissascraftingtreehouse.com, and there's a tab for product shares. And one um, menu option just gives you the overview. And then there's a second option for the product shares that are current and alive now with a button to click and uh, sign up. So um, let me know if you'd like to reserve your shares. I'm doing a um, early bird special as well, so you get a bonus if you sign up and pay by certain dates. Now, I can't receive payment this early on um, by Stampin' Up! rules, but um, I send invoices when it's appropriate, but it's um, if you I'd like to know what people are wanting, and you can reserve them uh, ahead of time, so that helps me to plan. Oh, yay, you like my product shares. Yay, Pam. <laughs> Yes. Um, so what else? What else do I need to tell you? Yes. And so uh, all the products are shown uh, on that uh, web page. So you can check out all the different products, the photos that I have. And then I will be taking pictures of what I shared today as well. So those will go up on the site as soon as I can um, get around to it. Uh, what have I forgotten to say? I know there was something else I was going to share. Now I can't remember. This always happens. <laughs> Um, anyway, I guess, uh, well, I'll be back next Thursday, of course, and I did sort of um, th threaten or tease <laughs> that I might come on live early last week because I wasn't coming on Thursday. Didn't do that, but I do have some really cool projects that I demonstrated when I was at the uh, pre-on stage event, um, and I do want to share those, so those are probably going to be coming next week, at least some of them, because there was a lot um, that I shared. Um, so I'm excited to, to I'm sure, and one of them is like a technique, so it's pretty cool. So um, stay tuned for that next Thursday, whatever that date is. I'm not going to try to guess. Um, <laughs> I do this every week. Um, but anyway, check out my latest blog posts and my product shares. And thank you so much for joining me and um, being a part of the Facebook Live today on the live or replay. Um, let me know if you have questions or comments. Um, always love to hear from you. So have a wonderful evening and happy crafting. Bye, everybody.